Okay, sets. We're just going to look at some language sets. And the first thing we need to do is make up some sets. So I'm going to call set A. I'm going to make it equal to these numbers. I'm going to make it equal to 1, 2, 4, 5, and 7. And I'm going to make set B, a different set, equal to these numbers. Uh, let's have 2, 3, five and six. Now a set is a unique collection, sorry, is a collection of um, unique objects. Now that means the objects aren't repeated. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, seven. If we were to put another one in here, so to have two ones, that would no longer be a set. So there must only be one um, item of any description. There can't be anything that's repeated or the same. So you can't have more than one, two, or four, or five, or seven. They can only have one of each of these things. So that's how you know what a set is. So if I was to write out the numbers one, 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 that can't be a set because they are all copies of each other. And the other thing we need to know is, is what a universal set is. And a universal set is this symbol, and um, sometimes used as a big or a big U. Okay, um, for universal set. You've got to be careful of this because it looks very much like the union symbol. So, first thing I'd like to do is I'm going to draw a diagram to represent this. It's quite helpful sometimes to have um, what we call Venn diagrams, okay, um, to represent our sets. So, I'm just going to now draw a circle. I'm going to have to need to move this. Let's just move this across. And if I just copy that and get another circle, and that will help us get our Venn diagram. Now, I'm going to call this circle here to represent A. So, all the things in A, I'm going to have to put inside this circle. And all the things in B, I'm going to put inside this circle. And the universal set is the rectangle. Now, the universal set is all the things we're interested in. So, I'm now going to call the universal set um, integers from 1 to 10. Okay, now you may know the symbol for integers as Z. Okay, this is another way of putting integers. We use this silly notation to make it less work for us to write it, so we don't have to write the word integers, we can just write Z. So all the integers from 1 to 10 are going to be universal sets, so I need to get all the numbers from 1 to 10 inside this rectangle. Well, first of all, let's start off by putting all the things in B and A in this overlap. So what's in both? Well, two, I think, is in both. Let's have our highlighter so we don't help us remember. So there's two in both. What else is in both? We've got five in both. Now we can see that three is in B, but not A. Six is in B, not A. And one, four, and seven are in A, not B. So we need to remember that. So one, four, and seven, I'm going to put in this area, in A, okay, because they're not in B. And I'm going to put 2 and 5 in this area, because in both A and B, the overlap. And then I've got B, 3 and 5. They're in B. Sorry, made a mistake there. That's not 3 and 5. That's going to be 3 and 6. Okay, they're in B, but not A. Now, there's some numbers missing. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So there's three numbers in the universal set missing. Because remember, the universal set was introduced from 1 to 10. So I need to add in 8, and I also need a 9 and a 10. And we've got what we call this a Venn diagram. Now, let's move on and look at some notation. Next thing I want to do is I want to look at this piece of notation. A intercept B. Now these are the things in both A and B. So in this case, it's quite easy to see in the diagram. What's in both A and B? 2 and 5. So we can see the intercept is 2 and 5. I'm also going to shade the intercept to help us see where it is on our diagram. So there's the intercept, all this yellow area here. Okay, where they overlap. And so therefore these two numbers are in the intersection. So notice how I've highlighted the things that are all in the intersection. Now there's another piece of notation you need to know. 
and this is going to be A union B. Now A union B is everything that's in both A or B, okay, uh, so it can be in A or B or both. So if I want to highlight that area, let's highlight in pink. So it can be in A, I'm not going to be able to do everything, but it can also be in the overlap, because it can be in A or B, So and it can also be in A and B, and we can also have B. So there we go, all of these numbers are in A union B, so here, here, and here. It can be in A or B or both. So let's write down the numbers that are in A, B or both. Well, if you remember, it was all the numbers from 1 to 7. And I am probably going to struggle to keep this on the same level and stay on the screen, so I'm just going to go down a bit. When you write it, please be careful and try and get it on one line and keep it neat. Um, always looks always good to keep um, your maths looking neat. So that's A union B. Now we're going to look at a, another piece of notation. A complement. This is A complement. There's another way of writing it. You may see in some books a little squiggly line in front of the A. This also means the complement of A. Now complement means what's not in it. So everything that is not in A. So let's look back at our diagram. Okay, and I'm going to choose yet another highlighter. And everything is not in A. Oops, gone into A a bit there. Is everything that's outside of A? Well, this is outside of A, so that's obvious. But also, this area here is outside of A. So everything that's not in A are going to be these numbers. So what's not in A? We had one in A, we had two in A, but we didn't have three in A. Three was just in B. 4 is in A, 5 is in A, but 6 is not in A. I think 6 was in B, it's underneath all these highlights, so 3 was there and I think 6 was there if I remember correctly. 7 is in A, but 8 is not in A. And 9 and 10. So the complement of A, or everything that's not in A, so remember both those words, complement and not, are all these numbers. Okay. Let's move on to some new notation. Now this one is a special one called the empty set. When there's nothing in the set, it's called the empty set. It can be equal to that, or sometimes some books use the double bracket. Obviously having nothing in it to represent the empty set. So let's say we've got a set A. Notice I'm always using A. You can call sets anything you like. And we're going to do even numbers. And we're going to do B. And these are going to be called odd numbers. Correct bit of writing there, not. Right, now I want to do A intersect B. Where do these two things overlap? What is the intersection A and B? Well, we know the even numbers are 2, 4, 6, 8, and the odd numbers are 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on. They never intersect. So therefore, the answer to that is the empty set. Okay, even and odd numbers intersect is the empty set. Now, let's just have another little puzzle. Let's say what we want to do the union of A and B. Can anybody tell me what that is? Well, you've got all the numbers counting upwards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on. And this is called the natural numbers. Uh, they're the counting numbers, you might like to think. 1, you start when you start counting, oops, you start counting with 1, and you go to 2, 3, 4, 5. And the symbol for that is an N with this double line down the middle for natural numbers, if you want to take shortcuts. So there's another name. Now this bit of notation here is what is the number of elements in the set A? So let's look for the number of elements in set A. We had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There were 5 things in set A. So, when you see that, how many things are in set A? It is 5. And we could do also work out what N of B was. So let's scroll back up and have a quick look. B had 1, 2, 3, 4 things in it. Okay, so the number of things in B was 4. Now, a set A is equal to B 
only if all the things in A are exactly the same as all the things in B. Now in this case we clearly do not have equal sets. A has got 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, B has got 2, 3, 5 and 6. So they are not the same. So therefore they're not equal to each other in this case. So in our scenario A is not equal to B. A would be equal to B. Let's give you an example of what A would equal to B would look like. So A equal B is going to be quite obvious hopefully when you see it. Let's just say I'm going to have the numbers 1, 2 and 3 in A. There you go, 1, 2 and 3. Now for A to equal B, B must also have the numbers 1, 2 and 3. Seems really obvious? I hope so. So there's A equals B. Now last bit of notation is, is a member of. And this little symbol that looks like that. Now if you look at these two sets, I could say that 1 is a member of A. It's also a member of B as well, because but bear in mind A and B are exactly the same. One is also a member of B. So is two, so is three. So basically we're saying this element is a member of that set. Now, conversely, say we were looking at the number six. Well, that is not a member of A. Well, cunningly, we cross a line through a member of to make it not a member of. A. So if you want to use some short, be clever and use some shorthand of this, 6 is not a member of A. Now that concludes most of the basic notation you need to do to be able to understand sets. Okay, so we've looked at the universal set symbol. That one's a better one than that one. I would use the curly E to do the universal set. I've reminded you what an integer symbol looks like. Okay, we've got a Venn diagram. Remember the circle represents the whole set and another circle represents another set. And where the circles cross is the overlap. Now we've got a symbol for that, the intersection. So it's where they overlap. Now the union is what's inside all the, all the circles. So if we get the two circles we can find the union. Remember, not A is the complement, it's everything not in A. Empty set is this symbol, means there's nothing in it. N of A means the number of things in A, and it was 5. And last but not least, we've got this little symbol to mean is a member of. <laughs>